Imagine launching a projectile from the ground at an angle theta and an initial velocity v. So we'll make some simplifying assumptions that the ground is flat and that the only force acting on the object is uh, gravity which acts downwards. Now if you change v, the initial velocity, and you change theta, the angle, uh, the distance traveled will change. Now let's determine a formula for the distance d, which depends on v and theta. And what we'll do is we'll then see as you change v by a little bit, or as you change theta by a little bit, say due to error in measurement, how, well, how does d change? If v is measured with some error, theta is measured with some error, what's the possible error for d? So let's start with determining a formula for d as a function of v and theta. Look at the initial velocity here. Here's a vector of length of v at an angle theta. It has a vertical component of v sine theta and a horizontal component of v cos theta. So if we want to now write down the path of the projectile, uh, x of t, y of t for any t, so x of t, y of t is uh, the, the, um, the location of the projectile at any time t, we can do that as follows. Well, x of t is just going to be v cos theta, the speed in the uh, horizontal direction, times t. Assuming no forces act in the horizontal direction, uh, you just have linear motion in the horizontal direction. Now for y of t, uh, we have to um, do a little bit more work. We can, uh, assuming that the only force is gravity, which acts downwards, we can use Newton's second law. So we'll get y double dot, the second derivative of uh, the position y of t, is just minus g. Assuming gravity acts downwards, we'll put the minus sign in front of g there. So then if you integrate both sides of that, you can find y dot, the first derivative, is minus g times t plus a constant of integration. Now the constant of integration is just the initial velocity, y dot of zero. But the initial velocity in the vertical direction is v sine theta. So y dot is minus gt plus v sine theta. And then to find y of t, we integrate both sides of that equation with respect to t. And we find y of t is minus gt squared over 2 plus vt sine theta plus a constant of integration, which is y of 0. But assuming that the object is launched uh, from a height of 0, y of 0 is 0. And this is the equation we get for y of t. Minus gt squared over 2 plus vt sine theta. So there's x of t, y of t, the path of the projectile. Now what we want to do is determine when the projectile hits the ground. And it hits the ground, of course, when y of t is 0. So let's set y of t equal to 0 and solve for t. We find either t equals 0 or t equals 2v sine theta over g. And that latter one is, of course, the one we're interested in. So to determine how far the uh, projectile travels, we take this value for t and plug it in to the x component. So here's what we get when we do that. When t equals 2v sine theta over g, x is v 2v sine theta over g times cos theta. And that's the distance as a function of v and theta. It's 2v squared sine theta cos theta over g. And if you recall this identity that sine of 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, this simplifies now. d of v and theta is v squared sine 2 theta over g. Okay. So now let's turn to the problem at hand. And we'll suppose that v is measured as 10 meters per second with a possible error of 3%, which amounts to 0.3 meters per second. So that means v is somewhere between 9.7 meters per second and 10.3 meters per second. Similarly, theta is measured as 1 radian with an error of 2%. So theta is somewhere between 0.98 radians and 1.02 radians. Now what we can do is calculate d of v and theta for various values of v and theta. So to start, d of 10 and 1 works out to be about 9.279. And then we can look at 10.03, or sorry, 10.3, 1.02, 10.3, 0.98, so on, compute these various values of d, 
and uh, read off the min and the max of these. You see, you see them here, and we can say that d then is somewhere between 8.563 and 10.016 meters. That's using the formula for d of v and theta. Now this gives a range uh, in the measurements of about Let's see, about 1.453 meters, and uh, if you divide that in half there, you get about 0.7265, and in relation to D at 10 and 1, that's about an 8% error. At rounding up, that's about 73 centimeters. Okay, now let's look at what we get if we use the linearization. So, to use the linearization, we'll have to uh, calculate partial derivatives of D. There's the formula for D again. Let's take the partial derivative of d with respect to v, here's what we get, and evaluate it at the point 10 and 1, we get roughly 1.856. Similarly, take the partial with respect to theta, evaluate at 10 and 1, and here you get minus 8.493. So then, d, d, now that's some awkward notation, it's the differential of the distance traveled. Okay. At the point 10 and 1, well, in general, it's the partial times delta v plus the partial with respect to theta times delta theta. And at the point 10 and 1, you get 1.856 plus times plus or minus 0.3, and then minus 8.493 times plus or minus 0.02. So if we're interested in the maximum possible error, the maximum value for dd is obtained by taking, for instance, uh, the plus 0.3 and then the minus 0.02, so that you get these errors adding up. And that gives a value of about 0.7267. It's not quite exactly what we had when we did it uh, previously using d of v and theta, but it's pretty close, and if you round up, it's about 73 centimeters. So there's the error in the distance traveled by a projectile uh, found in a couple of different ways. And in fact, the answers we get are very, very similar.